uh, first ones right now in why did I put wait what yeah, in uh, if you play Dishonored if you're able to, if you if you suck at the game Dishonored then it's really hard for you to play stealthy and quiet and sneaky and you know non killy killy non stabby stabby you try you know if you want to play a a nice guy it becomes very hard uh, to not kill anyone if you suck at the game so skill is a factor in some degrees as far as defeating the beating the normal everyday game but uh it's in that game though like the skill your skill in the game your ability to snipe somebody uh actually made it makes it decides whether or not you can get a character to be on your side you know whether or not you can rescue a character which has a rather drastic impact on the ending it affects it rather significantly so you which i find to be which a lot of the games in my opinion are missing that factor now because usually when they do something like that's like oh you have to be able to defend you have to be able to def uh you know defeat this person here without have to be able to kill this person it's like okay here's all the training rules we're going to add to you uh you're going to be able the person's going to be locked in a room you're going to be like two feet away and you just got to shoot them one time, with a bullet, it doesn't even actually cost you a bullet, it's a free bullet, we're giving you the damn bullet for free. You know, but in this game, but in that one, like, the shot you had, to, the shot that I got, when I got in the situation there, I was kind of slow following this person. Uh, so, the shot I had to take was, I was basically on the halfway across the plaza, so I had to pull out my sniper rifle. When I pulled the trigger... I didn't properly adjust for the game, uh, for the ballistic time, wind. So, in other words, I shot behind the guy and ended up killing one of his bodyguards, not him directly. So, as a result, I didn't rescue the individual my first playthrough of the game, my first time playing the game. So, the ending for mine was a whole lot shittier as a result. I like, seriously, my first time playing Black Ops 2, my ending was really fucking shitty. Probably could have been better. There have been plenty of options to make it better. But yeah, my skill at the game was bad because I hadn't played any Call of Duty game in like ages. So yeah. I like that. I rather enjoyed that. I found that to be a rather interesting idea to keep to bring that back. Cause I don't even know if that was ever even here in the first place. I'm assuming it was, but then again I'm a I'm a gamer who joined the gaming sphere in uh when did Fallout New Vegas come out? That would have been Shortly before Fall into Vegas, Black Ops 2 was when I I joined on Black uh mid. All right, I joined the summer before Black Ops 2 came out. That was like the first time I actually became like what I class myself as a legitimate gamer, where I actually started gaming on the regular instead of just ca occasionally at a friend's house. It was when Black Ops 2 came out. So let's see, what would that have been? That it's I mean not Black Ops 2, Black Ops 1. So uh, they had interview three. <laughs> Let's see, Interview 3 came out a year later after that. So, that would have been one year. Then Black Ops 2 came out recently. It came out about a, a little under a year ago. And Black Ops 3 will be coming out soon. So, I mean, not Black Ops 3 will be coming out. Uh, Modern Warfare Ghost will be com coming out soon. So, about three and a half years is how long I've been playing video games. Ever since the summer of... 2000 and... Uh, 2009, maybe? No, no, not 2009. 2000, yeah, yeah, 2000... I gotta figure this out. Give me a second to do the math. Alright, 2013 is Black Ops 3. I mean, Black Ops... I mean, Modern Warfare Call of Ghost. 2012 was Black Ops 2. 2011 was... I find it sad that I'm actually using Call of Duty as... Actually, I don't really find it sad. I'm not surprised that I'm using Call of Duty as a uh, bench part. Because that was the, one of the first uh, console games I ever played. So it's and not surprising. Call of Duty 2 is the first one I ever played console-wise. Part of my reason why I like shooters so much is because of that. It's the first video game I've played since... <laughs> anyway, it's not important. So let's see. Uh, Black Ops... Like I said, Black Ops uh, 2 came... I mean, MW3 came out... Alright, right, Black Ops 2 came out in 2012. Interview 3 came out in 2011. Uh, Call of Duty Black Ops 1 came out in 2010. So I would have been in, yeah, just before Christmas, I think, actually, when I think about it. Just before Christmas in 2009 is when I first started playing any video games. Now, I didn't start playing them seriously until the summer of 2000 and, 
2010, so 2009, though, is when I first started playing video games legitimately. Up until that point, I never, ever played video games outside of Pokemon and RuneScape. Like, seriously, that was it. It was Pokemon on my Game Boy. I like Pokemon a lot. Pokemon Gold was my favorite. Although, Pokemon Red was the first Pokemon game I ever played. But yeah, I like Gold the best. Uh, so yeah, it, yeah, Pokemon. And Harry Potter. I had a Harry Potter game I really enjoyed. It was like Harry Potter and the... I think it was the... It wasn't the Sorcerer's Stone. It was Harry Potter and the... It was the second one. It was their game, though. It was like a game on that for the Game Boy. I loved that game. That was really enjoyable. I gotta find that again. No, no, actually, no, it was the Sorcerer's Stone. I think, yeah, it was Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. It was the first one, yeah. It was a Game Boy game they made for the Game Boy Color, I believe. Or it might have been the Game Boy one. I don't remember, but it was like a J... It was a... I think it was a JRPG, is what they call those? It's where uh, you walk around and do whatever, and then occasionally you'll find a battle, and then you have to control how your people do the fighting. I think, that's, I think those are called JRPGs. I don't really know, though. Uh, I don't even know what that stands for, to be honest. I'm not, like I said, I'm not a big, I wasn't a big gamer for a long time. The only other game I played outside of that was Crossfire and... Uh, anything else? Yeah, I played Crossfire. I played Crossfire a bit, uh, which is a PC game, free, free PC game, but the problem was it was filled with hackers and then people who... It was one of, it was one of those pay-to-win games, you know, we have to... Have to it was a free game technically, but if you wanted to buy the good weapons... Uh, if you wanted to get the good weapons, you had to pay real money for it. And since I was fucking broke, that wasn't going to happen. I do not have money, never have money, I'm never going to have money. I, well, actually, I probably will someday, but not currently. I don't have a whole lot. I, the only way I can actually buy stuff is to budget my money well, which is what I do. I spend as little as possible so that I can afford big things like video games and HD TVs and HD recording equipment. And even though when I do get those things, like, you know, if it's, if it's HD TV, I buy cheaper aspects of this is an em I have an Emerson 720p HD TV. Now I can I, I'm able to po there's a possible way that I can record in 720p I mean uh, 1080p on my uh, Poggy gaming system here. I just have no fucking clue how. I think I have to get myself another HDMI cable. But the issue is that I wouldn't be able if I was to do so I wouldn't be able to uh, listen to the game while playing it. So I would basically have mufflers on. I wouldn't be able to, because uh, I, what I use to listen to the game right now is, uh, my, as a headset, my, uh, fuck, what is this headset again? Uh, my Turtle Beach headset that I'm currently using to listen to everything. That's how I can hear the sound and respond to the game, and I rather, I prefer to keep it like this, even if it decreases the quality of my video game reviews. I mean, video game footage quality, because, to be honest, you really can't tell, it's very hard to tell the difference between a 720p and a 1080p video. Uh, it's to the point where, it, like, unless you're looking at, like, small text, you're not really going to notice a difference. Uh, and it's, like, for example, uh, a good game, the only, uh, only time I've ever noticed a difference between a 720p, a noticeable difference between a 720p and a 1080p video was when I was, pl uh, when I was uh, watching a playthrough, well, not playthrough, but yeah, a video series uh, called... Uh, the Alternate History of Aquitaine by Mr. Jerm... Something. Mr. Shadowich? I gotta, I gotta, I gotta look it up right now. I'm gonna look it up because I'm, uh, I'm subscribed to him. He's, uh, it, it was, uh, on the Crusader Kings 2 game is the name of it. Let's see. My subscriptions. Let me see. If you're down to the bottom, because I haven't done this one in a while. Yeah, Mr. J. W. N. T. Farland. Farland. He's a guy I've been subscribed to for a while uh, because he I watched I started watching him because of his uh he was a uh, part of the I played Arma two and Arma three with a guy named with some guys named Kilroy and Dyslexy and a couple other guys but he didn't uh but uh he didn't really do too much for me with those guys he just uh, happened to be playing as part of their group called Jack Tactics. Uh, he was just kind of associated with them, but he, I found him because he was in an alternate view of, a, it was on the other side of an, a, of a, of a player versus player conflict that they were doing. Uh, oops, I accidentally run over to my crops there. Uh, and he basically got messed up. That's how I found out about his videos. It was just kind of funny just watching him get messed up by artillery. 
and his response, which is why I decided to look further into his stuff, because his response was like, oh, fuck, fuck, shut up. Well, it wasn't that bad. It was actually kind of, it was a, actually, surprisingly, he, he did not cuss that much, when I think about it. He really doesn't cuss a whole lot. Hmm. Trying to feel weird now. Anyways, yeah. So, yeah, he was uh, just, his response to it was just kind of hilarious. So I went through, and, you know, way he had the video set up, so it was just a bunch of highlights of, like, their uh, things that they did all day, because they were playing for a couple hours. So he, he just kind of highlighted all their funny things they did that day, and I just kind of enjoyed it. So I enjoyed it. So I looked through and watched some of their uh, watched some of his other stuff, and I subscribed to him because it was just kind of funny watching uh, his side of things. Because he because like when he was playing, he was a he really wasn't a good shot at the game. He was kinda, it was just an average. He was probably an, honestly he was probably just one of the most average players out there on their team on their in their group. It wasn't amazing, but I mean he was he was okay. Uh, there was nothing like spectacular about him that made him stand out from everyone else. He just kind of was there, but then again, his personality and his personality wasn't like too insanely over the top. It just was, just kind of fun. It was just kind of I don't know how you put it. It was like a, it was kind of like a formal personality that you don't really see that often in war, or in fighting shooting games. And he he wasn't like you know it wasn't too joking, but he was kind of joking a little bit. Like the big thing though was that he was just kind of seemed like a really he, he kind of just tried to be a seemed like he kind of tried to be a nice guy he, and he completely understood his limitations and capabilities so that's why i liked watching his stuff and then eventually came out with uh, his crusader kings uh he started doing this play a single solo playthrough of crusader kings 2 called the uh, alternate history of aquitaine which if i remember and i'll make a note right now for myself to remember i'll try to link the first video in the series now his first video in the series unfortunately had very shitty quality uh, audio wise because uh, very, it just had it just wasn't that good first wise because he didn't really know what he was doing it's kind of actually one of those first times in like a playthrough or anything uh, but as the series progressed it became a very very interesting just watch him uh, do this because he was very good at Crusader Kings 2 which if you don't know what Crusader Kings 2 is basically just like a uh, it's basically a game where you go through and well, do whatever you want in medieval society, more or less. But it's like a over-the-top strategy, more of a strategy kind of thing. But you can play the game in different ways. One of my personal favorite ways to do things, is, when I play that game, because I did buy the game because of him, is to uh, go in there, basically make my guy have as much children, have as many children as possible. Uh, usually, I get like the heathen. Uh, I become like a heathen and stuff. <laughs> kind of hilarious. Uh, like the, I get some traits that uh, are negative normally since it's like, I get some negative traits, but they result in increased fertility. And if you have those in your children, you usually have an increased chance of getting certain uh, things like those, those traits that are taught to them. And then I, I like to do that. And then I spread it across the world, basically just my children across the world, basically just destroying all forms of society and watching uh, everything collapse just because everyone has like way too many fucking children. <laughs> Hilarious. That's my preference to do that game because I'm pretty bad at it. I'm I'm not even, I I am terrible. I can't win a fight for shit in that game. <laughs> Basically, I I said I said it on the easiest. Dif I said, well, actually, there's really no difficulty settings. It's, well, there, there's really no like the difficulty is more or less based off of uh, what who you choose to play as. So I always make I always like you know just pick some random dude who's got some power, but. Uh, so he's not gonna like fall apart, but he's not really in a position where he's gonna get his stuff taken away. I like the my personal favorite is the uh, King of York. I usually I've got the King of York, the uh, Duke of York. That's my favorite guy to go with. Uh, as early as possible in the game. Yeah, it's just kind of interesting to see how the game evolves and <laughs> well, in my case, usually ends up having like millions upon millions of warring nation, uh, warring kingdoms. <laughs> That's kind of what mine always end up devolving into, but. For his, he uh, made Aquitaine. He made Aquitaine, which is a, which was uh, one of the three. Uh, well, when when uh, Charlemagne died, he had a, he had uh, three sons, and due to the customs of the time, he, uh, for his three sons, he got three separate parts of the of the of his territory. His what you know the country he owned. One was co one uh, they called Francia. One they called Aquitaine. Yeah, I think. The other one was like Traerigors or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, third one was kind of relevant, but Aquitaine was pretty big. Uh, and it was kind of like a, it's uh, it was pretty big, and uh, he made, what he did in this case is he took Aquitaine and then uh, turned that from a duchy into a separate kingdom and then 
took over the world. Well, they didn't really take over the world. They did a whole lot with it. 